So this reading this morning is all about the Sabbath and Jesus curing on the Sabbath. This is this this story is only found in the Gospel of Luke. It's one of like six healing stories on the Sabbath. Um, that's only found in the Gospel of Luke. So the question this morning is: Couldn't Jesus have waited? We have this story of Jesus teaching in the synagogue, and in comes this woman who's been over with this ailment that she's had now for 18 years, right? So he's teaching in the gathering on the Sabbath. And what day is the Sabbath? Sabbath. Right? It's, it's not Sunday, right? For those of you that thought the Sabbath is Sunday, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're wrong. Um, <laughs> The Sabbath is actually on Saturday, even in the Christian understanding of that. We gather as a, as a body to worship Christ on Sunday morning. And why do we gather on Sunday morning? Not because it's the Sabbath, but hmm? it's the first day of the week and it's the say it loud. Who said it? Say it louder. It's the day that Jesus rose from the dead. That's why we gather on Sunday. You used to gather on Sunday night. If you read the New Testament, it talks about him gathering on Sunday nights to worship, right? Um, which would, in the Jewish understanding, would actually be Monday, right? Because the days begin at sundown the day before. You all are learning a lot this morning if you didn't know this. <laughs> the days begin at sundown on the day before. So technically, the Sabbath actually begins at sundown on Friday and goes until you see the first three stars in the sky, according to the Jewish Talmud. Now, some Christians, some Christian sects or denominations that follow the Sabbath go from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. So it's a little bit easier than looking for the first three stars, because if it's cloudy, you don't see the stars. So you don't really know when the Sabbath is over. But there's things that you're not supposed to do on the Sabbath, right? What are some of the things we're not supposed to do on the Sabbath? Not work. Not work. Actually, here, I have I want to show this to you. I have a list here. Of 39 things that you're not allowed to do on the Sabbath. 39 of them. All of these pertain to work. They're broken up into four subcategories. Bread, garments, hides, and building are the subcategories. Basically, it's anything that can be creative you're not allowed to do. Right? The list includes the ones that pertain to bread. Let's see how smart you all are and see if we can figure out why these pertain to bread. Sewing. Plowing, reaping, binding in the sheaves, threshing, winnowing, selecting, grinding, sifting, kneading, and baking. Right? Sowing as in planting, not as in sowing. Right? We'll get to that kind of sowing later. But you can't plant, plow, reap, bind, thresh, winnow, select, or gather fruit, grind, sift, knead, or bake. You can't cook on the Sabbath. So if you want to have food on the Sabbath, you have to cook the day before and have leftovers. Right? When the, when the Egyptians were, lo- when the Israelites were lost in the wilderness after they left Egypt, they collected what? Manna. manna. And how many days did they collect manna? Six. six. On the sixth day, how much manna did they collect? Double A double portion for that day and the next because you don't work, work on the Sabbath. Right, And that takes us back to why the Sabbath was created. Why was the Sabbath created? What's the reason behind the Sabbath? It's day's rest. And God created in Genesis, right? On the seventh day, God what? He rested. So if God can rest, then we should rest. Right? It also comes from their exodus out of Egypt. When God gave them the tablets and said that to keep the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Have a day of rest. Why? Because when they were in Egypt, what did they do every day? They worked every day. The Sabbath law is a law that helps those who wouldn't necessarily get a rest. Right? For slaves and for servants. Everybody rests on the Sabbath. Nobody works. Everybody gets that day off. No one's allowed to plow, sow, reap, bind, 
and on to the garments, right? The, now the, this kind of sewing, right? Wool shearing, bleaching of wool, combing of wool, dyeing of wool, spinning of wool, warping of wool, making two spindle trees, which is, is, which is getting ready to, to sew, weaving of two threads, separating of two threads. You can't even take threads apart. Tying a knot, untying a knot, sewing on with two stitches or tearing in order to, to sew together. So you, according to that, you can tie one stitch. You can sew one stitch. But if you go do that second one, dude, that's it. You've done it. Right? According to hides, you're not allowed to trap or hunt, slaughter, skin, salt, preparing the hide, scraping off hair, or cut the, the hide. So... There's no hunting. And building, you can't write. Writing two single letters. Again, you can write one letter. You can do one stitch or write one letter. So when you go to that second one, that's it. You can't erase in order to write two letters. You can't build. You can't demolish. You can't kindle, meaning you can't start a fire. You can't extinguish. A fire. So if you have a fire going on Friday before the Sabbath starts and the Sabbath starts and that fire is still going, you can do nothing to keep it going, but you also can't let it go out. <laughs> if you have a fire lit on Friday before the Sabbath, you can't do anything then to keep that fire going on the Sabbath, but you also cannot let that fire go out. Because you're not allowed to extinguish the fire, right? Hammering or transferring from one place to another. And that's where, this one gets interesting. This transferring from one place to another, it talks about carrying, right? You're not allowed to carry anything. Well, I'm carrying my, my phone right now, right? But I'm also, according to the Jewish law, I'm carrying my keys. I'm carrying my wallet. I'm carrying these other little things I got in it. You see how much money I've got? I'm carrying these other things. I'm carrying my pocket knife. I'm carrying the, the microphone pack that's strapped here to my side. Anything that's in your pockets, you're carrying. So if you go outside on the Sabbath, your pockets have to be empty. If you're chewing gum, you're carrying it. Or food, like if you're chewing a burger or something and you walk outside, you just broke the Sabbath law. Do you see how intense these laws are? And here's Jesus teaching on the Sabbath. And a woman who's been over for 18 years. Now, we don't have anything in our society like this, do we? Do we? We used, I hear we used to, blue laws. Did you know the blue laws are still in effect in the state of Wisconsin? What's a blue law? There, oh, I was wondering who was going to ask that question. What's a blue law? It's a law that prohibited the selling of things for religious purposes on Sunday. Um, known throughout... Most of the 50 states, um, I'm not sure if it was in every state, but there's actually still one county in New Jersey that has very stringent blue laws today. Um, in Bergen County, New Jersey is notable for their blue laws, banning the sale of clothing, shoes, furniture, home supplies, and appliances on Sundays. Today in Bergen County, you couldn't go and buy a new pair of shoes. You can't buy... You can't, well, it doesn't say car on Sunday in Bergen County, which is interesting. But in Wisconsin, in Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Maine, Minnesota, Missouri, Oklahoma, New Jersey, there it is, in the whole state of New Jersey, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, car dealerships continue to operate under blue laws prohibiting sales of automobiles. You can't purchase and or trade an automobile on Sunday. Maryland prohibits Sunday automobile sales in only certain counties. And Michigan restricts Sunday sales to those counties with a population under 130,000. So we still operate under some of these same principles that we see in the, in the, from the Jewish understanding of the law. I can show you a document. I have it up on my computer right now. It's a 3,000-page document that breaks down and gives you 
the, the whole understanding in a, in a concise breakthrough on explanation on the law. What you can and cannot do on the Sabbath. And it's interesting here because out of all the stuff that's there, it's really not anything that Jesus did this morning. Jesus is there teaching in the synagogue and here comes this woman who's been bent over for 18 years. And he calls her woman. He refers to her not by her name. Just woman. You are. What did he say? You are. Did he say healed? Set free. Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And the synagogue leader is the one who says, what are you doing healing on the Sabbath? There are six days that we're supposed to do work and one we're supposed to rest. So why are you doing this on this day? Right? Why are you healing on this day? And Jesus says, don't you untie your donkey or your ox and take it to water? So in a sense, and, and stay with me, don't, don't get offended yet, just stay with me. Okay? Jesus is comparing this woman to an ox and a donkey. He's saying, I mean, that's the understanding that the Pharisees would have had, that she's no more than property. She's not worth your time to do this on this day. Right? Jesus says, wouldn't you untie your ox and your donkey and take them to water? And then here's the kicker. And this is where it all comes through and why Jesus couldn't wait. He says, ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham. What does that mean? He still didn't give her a name. But he clarified that she is Jewish and what are children of Abraham? Abraham. The chosen people. She is one of the chosen people. She is part of the in-group. She is one of you. Hypocrite. Leader of the synagogue. She is just like you. So why should she not be set free on this day where you will take your ox and your donkey, lead them off to water? He just gave her a name. Gave her a restoration to community. Because when she was bent over... It was right for him to say, you have been set free or you have been restored. Because when she was bent over, she wasn't a part of the community. She was a burden on her family. She was a burden on the community because she couldn't, she couldn't work. She couldn't do what was needed in the community to keep the community moving forward. Right? In the stereotypical roles, she would have been cooking and cleaning and doing that stuff for her family, right? In our understanding of this, she's restored to society to be a member who is giving back to those around her. A person who is able to do God's will and to be God's light in the world. Jesus set her free from what had been ailing her to restore her to the place that she needed to be in the community so that the community itself would be whole. So could Jesus have waited? Yes, it probably wouldn't have mattered in the whole grand scheme of things because this woman was bent over for 18 years already for her to wait another 23 hours, 24 hours, right? It wouldn't have made that much of a difference. But Jesus couldn't wait because when grace comes in, grace comes in. And when you see someone in front of you that needs to be restored, it is our responsibility to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to give restoration where we can, to give healing where we can, to give love where we can, to give grace and mercy that's been freely given to us because that's what God would do. Jesus didn't come to get rid of the Sabbath. We should all rest. Right? You should all take a day of rest. It's hard, I know. Because technically you can't drive your car on the Sabbath day. Because when you start your car, what happens? You turn the key. And, w- and when you turn the key, what happens? The engine fires. Fi- fires. So you're not allowed to kindle a fire on the Sabbath. You start a- when you turn that key, you start a fire. 
So you can't well, you can't work your horse either. So you can't go a half mile from home. But right, you're supposed to take a day of rest because that's what we need to do. God rested, so we need to rest. But in those days while we're out, and even on that day of rest, if you see someone in need, it is our job to be there to fulfill that need, to bless them as God has blessed us. So Jesus couldn't have waited. Because for her to wait one more second for that grace is not what God would allow. Because God didn't make you wait. So why should anyone else have to? So go into the world and remember to keep the Sabbath. Remember to rest. But also remember that when you see a need, fulfill a need. Because the world is changed. One act of random kindness at a time. All right? That's what we're called to do. And that's what we're called to be. The hands and feet of Jesus going and showing his love. Turning the system on its head, not always following the rules, but showing his love and grace in every step that we take. Mm-hmm.